it must have been such an exciting couple of weeks for you being in the Champions League final and now here at your first major tournament. Life doesn't get much better for a 22-year-old, does it? Um, no, no, it's, it's going well. Um, yeah, obviously the last couple of weeks have been a bit of a roller coaster. Um, obviously celebrating with the club football and now the, the focus after that finish was straight on, on, that, on where we are now and the Euros and our first game. So, um, yeah, it's been very good. I've obviously been loving it and, and now very excited for Sunday. So you've made 16 appearances for England, 10 of those have been starts. So do you feel like now you've become more of an integral part of this England side? Do you feel like one of the players more likely to start a game? Um, no, I never take that for granted. Um, that you're playing for your country, you have to give it everything and um, show you can step up when the, when the moment's there. Um, in training we've all been working so hard and getting ready for the game and you never know what can happen. So. Um, yeah, we're all ready and, and obviously raring to go. Um, considering how much talk there's been about the lineup for Sunday, um, the midfield in particular, we don't know yet whether Gareth Southgate's going to go with a two in midfield or a three in midfield. Considering how versatile you are as a player, how does your role change if you line up in a two or you line up in a three in midfield? Yeah, we've, we've obviously played different formations. Um, and coming through the ages, I've played in different positions. Um, when you're in a two, you're a bit more defensive minded. In a three, you can maybe go a bit more attacking and, and try to get in the box and, and, and help the front three. So yeah, we, we don't know yet. So we're, we're obviously excited. Um, and yeah, formation wise, I, I'm, I can be versatile. So um, yeah, it's a positive. We've seen um, lots of entertaining footage coming out of the camp, the, the players, you know, enjoying Call of Duty, enjoying <laughs> table tennis, basketball, all those kinds of things. It seems like there's a great team spirit. When do you think it will hit you that you're at a major tournament for the first time, you know, maybe when you're on the coach to Wembley, there's going to be 22,000 fans. When do you pull on your game face? It's been, it's, the game face has been on um, from the first day we met up. We, we know where we are, um, we know how important these, these games are and, and especially at a tournament, um, the first game is probably most important to get off to a good start, um, so, so we're ready for it. Obviously when you're in the camp with the boys you, you have fun, um, you bond together, we, as you said we're very close as a group um, and that's, that's obviously a massive part of in, in doing well and, and, and going far in tournaments. So. Um, we are close and, and we know the, the, where we are right now and how, how important that first game is. Thanks, Jess. Thank you. We'll now go online to Jerry Cox from Haters. Hi, Mason. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Good. Yeah, yeah. We, um, we spoke to Reese yesterday and he was talking about, you know, coming through the Chelsea Academy, growing up from the age of eight and nine with you. And obviously Declan's in the mix as well as yeah. Declan Rice. What's it like to be sort of coming from being a young boy playing with these lads to go into the Champions League final and now playing for England in a major tournament? Do you have to pinch yourself sometimes? Yeah, you do. Um, I think you, especially me, myself, I, I don't give myself time to kind of look at, look back at what's happened or, or kind of stay in the moment, what's going on now. I always try to look forward and um, not get stuck in the moment. I always obviously try to enjoy it, but... The, the journey that we've been on is, is unbelievable. Um, where we are right now, we're all so excited and, and obviously looking forward to, to what's, what's coming up. Um, and yeah, the, for us to come through together and be here now is, is special and um, it's something that we do talk about now and again, yeah. And you're a very young group. Do you think that's a good thing? We, talk, we hear people, pundits, talking about playing without fear when you're young. Do you think that's good for England that you, you are young? A fairly young group yeah it's something that we we talk about that fearlessness um going into games that that desire to want to win and enough as that we have this young group um we're hungry um to do well and, and to make the nation proud so going into every game we're going to be ready um and, and trying to perform to the best of our ability thanks jerry we go back in the room with carrie brown from being sports hi mason how are you okay i'm good thank you good into your first major tournament against a player who was ultimately one of your heroes as a youngster, Luka Modric. Um, you went up against him, of course, Chelsea, Real Madrid. Um, 
what did you learn from that occasion and from him? Yeah, he's always been a, a player that I've looked up to. Um, ever since he was in the Premier League playing for Tottenham, I, I watched him quite closely as a, as a kid. Um, and then obviously playing against him, it was weird because cause I've watched him so much growing up, I kind of knew his kind of moves and what he was what he was going to do. So um, it helps being a fan of a player and then play against him because you know um, what he likes to do. But yeah, it was the experience of that game obviously helps a lot. You, as a young player, you want to play in these big games and, and kind of learn how to handle the pressure and handle the big moment. And them two games were massive, obviously, um, in our run. And um, I gained a lot of experience from them two games. Game respects game. He came and spoke to you at Stamford Bridge after the match. What exactly did he say? Um, uh, he said, because I asked, I spoke to Kovacic before the first game and, and asked if I could get his shirt uh, in a, at a later date. Um, I managed to do that and then he asked for mine in the second game because um, I didn't actually give him mine in the first. So yeah, I think Kova said he likes to swap with players and get their shirts as well. So yeah, he come up to me and said he wanted mine and um, just said good luck in the, in the um, upcoming game. So yeah, it was brilliant for me obviously to speak to him and, and um, he wanted my shirt. So I was quite overwhelmed, yeah. What did that what did that <laughs> feel like to the kid that had watched the clips of him? Yeah, Where's it was special. Where's it was special. Um, yeah, it's at home. I've got it at home. Um, along with uh, a couple others I've got over the last couple months or so. So, um, yeah, it's always good to, to keep them special shirts. And you beat him to win the Champions League. Um, the one thing that I noticed so much about that performance in Porto was how much every single one of you, no nerves, um, complete forward drive all the way to the very moment and the way you all lift each, each other even when you were taken off and gutted to be and, and kept pushing. How much have you all taken from what was an emphatic performance? How much have you grown from that, do you think? Yeah, I think if you, if you win any competition, you gain confidence from it. Um, winning the Champions League, Obviously, one of the biggest in, in club football, it means a lot to, to all of us. So you do gain a lot of confidence. Um, and then from that, I knew what we was going into. We were going into a, a Euro, so um, we won it at a good time. Um, and it helps to, to carry on that confidence coming up, coming up to the first games. And, and yeah, looking forward to it. You are, of course, a uh, Chelsea boy, big fan. Jose Mourinho saying you're absolutely in his starting lineup. What does that mean to hear from the special one? And how much does Gareth Southgate rate in your great coaches that you've worked with? Yeah, it means a lot. Um, I've said before, I try not to look too much into the, what goes on um, away from the football pitch, but obviously from him, it, a legend in the, in the game. So um, it means a lot coming from him, but uh, most importantly is what we're doing in the training ground, what we're working on and, uh, and what the gaffer thinks. So, um, yeah, we're working hard and, and I'm ready to go. Thanks, Kerry. Uh, next, we'll go online with James Savundra from TalkSport. Mason, Jose also spoke today and said that you've got an incredible football brain. What do you put that footballing intelligence down to? Um, I'd probably say probably the Chelsea Academy. Obviously, I've grown up from the joining them at a very young age and um, the way they work has helped me grow to the player I am now and, and moulded me into the player I am now so um, that helps a lot but I think naturally I am I love football, uh, I, any chance I get to watch games or um, learn anything about how I can do better or better myself then I, then I would do that so that also helps and um, to be fully focused on, on improving all the time being the best you can be, uh, that's something that I always want to do. A lot of people have spoken about the influence that Frank Lampard has had on your career. Just how significant has that influence been? And have you been able to keep that relationship going since he left Chelsea earlier this year? Yeah, he's had a, he's had a massive influence. Um, obviously, the faith he put in me to, to bring me to Derby, first of all, and to, to play me and that valuable experience I gained in the Championship. Um, really, really helped me. And then obviously going back to Chelsea and 
um, the faith you've shown in me then to, to play me, um, even through the tough times, to, to really stick with me, it give me a lot of confidence. Um, and yeah, we will always stay in contact. I message him now and again. Um, he's obviously a busy man, so um, yeah, we stay in contact, we message, and yeah, he's uh, obviously the amount of support he's given me um, has really helped me improve as a player and, and as a person on and off the pitch. I spoke a bit about that before, and um, yeah, it, yeah, all thanks to him. Thanks, James. Next, we'll go to Nat Perks from BBC. Hi. Um, you mentioned there that even through the tough times, he stuck with you. Do you feel like where you are now is vindication for all those people that believed in you when maybe some pundits and some fans didn't? Um, yeah, yeah, I think um, I, I spoke a bit about it just then. I don't really try to look too much into what happens away, um, if it's good or bad. Um, I feel like it's not going to improve you uh, on the pitch. Um, what I like to focus on is the people that really mean a lot on the pitch and help me grow as a player. Um, that's always something I've I've tried to do, and and obviously I'm very confident in my ability and what I can do. So um, yeah, that's that's the most important thing for me. It's been a really long and grueling season for you guys. I think you've played more minutes than than most. Yeah. Um, is fatigue going to be an issue? Do you think for this squad? I think the Champions League was my 64th game this season, so um, quite a few. Um, but no, we're, we're a young squad. Um, we've played a lot of football, some of us, but I think when you're coming into a major tournament, play for your country, all that goes out the window, that, that tiredness in the legs, the, the long season, you don't really worry about that. All you're worrying about is, is doing well, is going far in the tournament. Um, and performing to the best of your ability and, and as I said before, making the, the, the nation proud, watching at home and everyone getting together and supporting us, that's, that's the most important thing. And they've all got the barbecues planned for Sunday. <laughs> it's going to be an absolute scorcher, but they're not the ones that have to go and play in it. Yeah. Um, 28 degrees at Wembley at 2 o'clock on yeah. Sunday. Have you done anything to mitigate that? Is there anything different you've done to prepare for that kind of heat or have you just got to suck it up? Um, yeah, we spoke a little bit about it. Um, look, we all have little things we can do to, to help it, but when you're playing football and it's the heat of the moment, um, literally, literally uh, in the game, the pressure's on, you, you've got to kind of put that at the back of your mind. Um, so obviously it's going to be tough at two o'clock. It's going to be a tough, tough game, um, but we're ready. And I think a lot of the boys have had experience in the past of dealing with this, um, playing in heat or any other circumstance, we're ready and um, yeah, I don't think that will play a big part in the game. And just finally, England's record in the Euros isn't brilliant, but in Russia, Gareth said, you're going to make your own history. So tell us how this time for England is going to be different. Yeah, and obviously knowing in the history, we've never won a Euros before. Um, so for us, we're, we're, some, we're a team that's very hungry to want to do that. We want to create history that no one has ever done before and I feel like with this group with this young group we, we can definitely do that and, and we know what we can do um, we know the level of players we have in this group and how together we are and, and how hungry we are to, to create history so um, we just got to go and, and perform on the pitch now. Thank you Thanks Nat. Back online with John McGarry from the Scottish Daily Mail Hi Mason, um, forgive me just for looking ahead just for a little minute if you don't mind, um, perhaps a week tonight you could be facing your Chelsea teammate Billy Gilmer at Wembley, um, how does that prospect sit with you and how impressed have you been with the impression that Billy's made in the last little while at the club? Yeah, it's, it's Billy's birthday today so I'd like to say happy birthday to him, he'll probably see this, um, I've spoke to him already but yeah, um, yeah he's a brilliant player. I've known him for um, a long time when he first joined Chelsea. I think I met him when he first joined and then I went out on loan and um, he was playing in the, the youth teams. Um, but I always tried to keep an eye on him and what he was doing because a young midfielder coming through that I heard a lot about. Um, I was always inter interested in his development and obviously seeing him making a step up into the first team and how well he's been doing. Um, it's been brilliant to see. and. I'm very close with him, along along with Chile as well. Um, we're close, and 
uh, he's doing really well and um, obviously looking forward to playing uh, against him. Thanks, John. Hi, Mason. How's it going? Hi, Nizar. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, um, at the last tournament, um, it, one of the problems maybe for England was a, a lack of creati creativity or ability to keep the ball under pressure. Um, are you confident that this England group can do both of those things in big matches, keep the ball, create uh, and cause problems? Yeah, I think if you look at um, the amount of talent going forward we have in the group, um, it kind of speaks for itself. We've, we've got players that can uh, handle the ball, keep the ball, um, play possession football, um, create chances and, and be a threat going forward. So that's something that we're, we're obviously always trying to work on to, to perfect that. Um, it's never going to be 100% perfection. You know that in a game, it, there's going to be times when things don't click at, at times. But with the players we have um, and what we've been working on in training and um, I have full, full hope that, that it's going to work and, and we're going to play together and it's going to connect when, when the game comes around. So that's what we, that obviously we're focused on and, and hopefully that happens. Thanks, Nizar. Hi, Mason. Um, I'm not sure uh, whether you asked this at the start because it was on, you were on mute, but um, Declan Rice, whenever we speak to you, we talk about Declan Rice. Um, he said he's in the room next door to you. Uh, at the hotel, what, yeah. what's it like being away with your best mate at a major tournament about to, to represent your country? It's obviously not something many people will be able to achieve. Yeah, he, he is staying next door, and every time he wakes up, he's he wakes up earlier than me, and he tries to knock on my door and wake me up to go breakfast every morning. So I might have to move a couple doors down, so I'm not right next to him. Um, but no, it's a, it's a have my best mate with me and to go through this experience with him and, and obviously all of the other boys as well. Um, it means a lot and it's something that is very special to us and that we'll remember for a long time. Okay, thanks Simon. Uh, next we'll go to Matt Reed from Kick. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, wonderful. Uh, hi Mason. Um, I've spoken to a, a number of players over the years on the topic of motivation. Um, what really drives them to go out and achieve? Now, you've already achieved a huge amount in a very short career. Some, some, some pros have stated that they are just never satisfied with having with what they've achieved, and that's what drives them on. Some talk about having a hatred of losing. What is it that motivates you to keep improving and fighting the way that you do? Yeah, I think the two things you mentioned then um, is obviously a massive part of being a winner and, and, and doing big things in the sport. Um, for us as a group, I spoke a little bit about it before that we've never won a Euros um, in our history. So for us to do that, and that's a, that's motivation in itself. Um, and obviously individually, just really trying to be at the top of our game to, to connect as a team and, and do the best we can and go as far as we can. Um, so yeah, that that's the most that's all the motivation we need, um, and, and going into the tournament. Thanks, Matt. And next we'll go to David Alvarez. Hi, Mason. How are you? Uh, what, what do you remember of the of the semi-final of the World Cup three years ago? Where were you? Uh, what feelings do you, you remember from watching that game? And how far did you feel then from what you where you are now, uh, having won the Champions League, being with with the national team and, and uh, ready to go against Croatia again. Yeah, um, I was very lucky enough to, to go out to Russia and watch one of the group games. Um, so even to be around it and, and witness the atmosphere um, of a major tournament, I remember that um, very vividly. Um, and then obviously watching the semi-final, I was at home, I think, with my family, watching that and, and obviously seeing um, Trip score the free kick and then they score late on and, and win the game. It's It was heartbreak to watch, um, let alone be a player and be involved in it. Um, but I think them kind of experiences and um, them kind of games give you that extra fire in the belly to want to wanna put something wrong, uh, put something right, sorry. Um, and, and that's definitely something that's in our minds and, and going to rear us on to, to really perform um, like we know we can.